Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, and all protocols observed. Um, thank you very much for coming to our press conference this morning. And at the end of this, there will be a copy of the preliminary statement available um, to you, rather than handing it to you now so that you all riffle through it and don't pay attention to me. Um, we do it that way. So it's my honour to her to be the chief observer for the European Union election mission for these, the fourth elections in Sierra Leone since the end of the Civil War. And they mark another milestone in the consolidation of democracy in Sierra Leone. The EU election observation mission has been present here since January the 25th with an expert team, 14 long-term observer teams covering all 16 districts of the country. And that's been added to by 40 short-term observers for the week around the vote itself, also allocated across the country. A team from the European Parliament headed by my colleague Nina Gill, and some 20 observers drawn from the EU embassy here and other European Union countries represented in Sierra Leone, a sign of our ongoing commitment. Of course, our public observations to date do not include the tallying procedure, where we still have observers present at the five regional centres. And indeed, NEC, I believe, has just published its first account of tallying, which basically says the 25% across all districts has not yet been met. And the EU's observer mission will remain in country to observe post-election developments and will publish a final report containing our detailed recommendations within two months of the conclusion of the electoral process. From what the mission has analysed so far and the reports of our over 100 observers in the field, we can say that the elections yesterday were, uh, I'm sorry, on Wednesday, were conducted transparently and ensured sufficient protection of the secrecy of the vote and the respect of the voters' will. Voters were able to exercise their democratic rights peacefully, and our observers assessed the voting as good or very good in 95% of the polling stations we observed. While they've rated the counting and closing slightly less positively, but still being very good, in a, very well in 85% of the stations observed. I'd especially like to congratulate the National Election Commission, NEC, which has conducted its work transparently and impartially, despite numerous challenges in the preparation for the elections over months, and they've largely implemented the electoral calendar competently. The Commission administered the elections well, problems raised over inadequate ballot papers were dealt with rapidly, and the public informed, which helped to dispel rumours. The elections were genuine, but concerns about violence were present throughout the election campaign and election day. There were reports of intimidation and acts of violence against some candidates and activists, which resulted in a number of injuries. And these events, though small in number, had a regrettable and negative effect on the tone and conduct of the campaign. On election day itself, our observers' reports indicate that during polling, the police fulfilled their duties and were not intrusive. However, during the wider campaign, the role of the police as an impartial force was questioned, and this was particularly demonstrated on election day, when security forces attempted to gain access to SRPP premises towards the close of polling. The restriction of the use of vehicles on election day was controversial and poorly communicated, although it doesn't appear to have created flashpoints on election day itself, as far as we are aware. If it's to be used again, there needs to be real clarity about its implementation for the general public, political parties, and the police themselves. Despite all of this, the campaign reflected a broadly level playing field, and voters were provided with a genuine choice, albeit one with very few women. We look forward to that changing in future elections. 
Regarding the legal as aspects of the electoral process, we've observed that the framework governing the 2018 elections provides for the conduct of a sound electoral process in line with international and regional commitments. Nevertheless, there are still some shortcomings, such as restrictions on the right to stand for public office. And as you know, the mission also monitors a representative selection of the media. Some of you. So there's wide and a diverse media landscape in Sierra Leone, which operates in relative freedom. But we've observed that the state broadcaster allotted political parties free airtime as required by law. But it also featured the policies of the ruling party through additional and uncritical coverage of the president's farewell tour around the country. A positive development was a national debate of the main presidential candidates that was organized with and focused on policies rather than personalities and was seen as a refreshing moment of democracy. And I'm losing my last page. Civil society organizations have also done a remarkable job. Their institutional capacity is well developed despite the many constraints they face in terms of resources. And the National Election Watch was able to deploy observers to most polling stations that we observe on election day. Our observers reported queues of voters at polling stations at the start of polling, and turnout appears to be high, reflecting the commitment of the people to the ballot box as the way forward for their country. So on the 7th of March, we saw many citizens of Sierra Leone cast their votes as this latest step in democracy. And political parties and candidates should urge supporters to refrain from using intimidation and violence and they should publicly commit to accepting credible election results as determined by NEC, the competent national institution, as part of their responsibility to support the democratic process in Sierra Leone.